Mr. President. Senator from Oregon. Mr. President, in a moment, I'm going to make a unanimous consent request on a piece of legislation that my Eastern Oregon constituents have done an extraordinary job with respect to building a coalition that brings people together on a contentious uh, issue. They deserve enormous credit, and I'll describe um, their efforts uh, here shortly. And I also want to thank, as we begin, Senator Barrasso. Uh, Senator Barrasso will be uh, taking a new role on the Senate Energy and Natural Resources uh, Committee uh, in January, and he and I have worked together uh, often, and I have appreciated him uh, talking with me on this matter as he uh, begins to look to his new duties in January. So, Mr. President, as if in legislative session, I would ask unanimous consent that the Energy Committee be discharged from further consideration of S-2828, the Malheur County Empowerment for the Oahe Act, and that the Senate proceed to its immediate consideration. Further, that the bill be considered read a third time and passed, and that the motion to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table with no intervening action or debate. Is there objection? Uh, Mr. President. The Senator from Wyoming. Uh, reserving the right to object, Mr. President, uh, I do appreciate the work of the Senator from Oregon, the work that he has done on this public lands bill. Um, I know that the amount of effort that has gone into this legislation is significant. Uh, locally driven public land bills take an incredible amount of time to get right. Uh, this legislation has gone through intensive local stakeholder involvement, very similar to what we have done in Wyoming with the Wyoming Public Lands Initiative uh, in my home state. The, the, public lands, the Wyoming Public Lands Initiative was spearheaded by our Wyoming County Commissioners Association. This initiative was started in order to resolve, through local negotiations, uh, the status of temporary, so-called temporary wilderness study areas in Wyoming that have now seemingly become permanent. Um, I recognize and understand public lands negotiations often result in compromise. Uh, this give and take, it, it, it's a good thing and it lets people closest to the issue have a significant voice. Uh, so I appreciate the efforts that the stakeholders on the ground in Oregon have made to get this bill to where it is today. Uh, however, I believe additional work is still needed, Mr. Uh, President, and I would uh, let my friend from Oregon know that I will work with him uh, and any other senators with public land issues before the Energy and Natural Resources Committee. Uh, we may not always agree on a given outcome, but I am committed to having those discussions with members of this body. And, and for this reason, Mr. President, I object. Mr. President. Senator from Oregon. I know my colleague uh, does have other business that he has to get to, but before uh, he attends to that, I just want to thank him for spending time with me already on this uh, issue. I'm going to outline the extraordinary effort that was made by my constituents. I think we all know, and I'm going to discuss it, that in the West, very often, citizens feel nobody is listening to them. Nobody cares about them. And you and I have talked about this, and this is a question of kind of how do you empower them with a framework that can help them, but also serve as a model for the country. So big thanks to my colleague, and I'm looking forward to working with him on this and other matters next year. Mr. President, what Senator Barrasso and I are discussing is the Malheur County Empowerment for the Oahe Act, known in our part of the country as the Malheur CEO Act. The bill has been in the works since late 2018. Back then, when a group of ranchers and small business people who live in Malheur County, Oregon, came to see me. They came to talk about this incredible part of Oregon they call home. It's wide open country. Not many people live there. 
But those who do want to make sure that they have a say in how it's going to be preserved and managed for the future. And when I say that the bill has been in the works since 2018, that's not the whole story. Because the fact is the groundwork for this bill has been in the makings for decades. And it is only recently that an incredible coalition of Oregonians from across the political spectrum have come together to make it possible for us to propose this legislation. As I touched on with Senator Brasso, in rural areas of the West, like Malheur County, there's often a feeling that people from thousands of miles away, particularly in DC, think that they somehow know better than rural citizens about what's good for those rural communities. There's a feeling, I guess I'd sum it up, in rural areas, a sense that somehow often elites just look down on them, that nobody's listening, that people in power consider them kind of simple cowboys who care little about saving land, air, and water. Now, I have town hall meetings in every county in Oregon, had 970 of them until earlier this spring when you couldn't do them in person, so we started doing them virtually. And I know from all those town meetings that residents of Eastern Oregon are actually working every day to try to propose common sense, practical policies to preserve special places for their kids and their grandkids. And they know that they're working for all Americans because all Americans own public lands. Eastern Oregonians believe, and I think it's a very powerful point, that nobody cares more about protecting treasures than those who live every day in those communities and are always thinking about what the future is for their kids and their grandkids. So I'll repeat that. Folks in rural Oregon know that the land is public land. It belongs to all Americans, and they know that their community's futures depend on keeping the lands healthy and usable. The ranchers of Malheur County want to be active participants in improving and keeping the ecological health of our public lands and with this legislation that we're discussing today, we'll have a real shot at doing that. The fact is, in some parts of the West, there have been bad actors abusing the land for their own gain and flouting the law in a dangerous way. For example, in 2016, a heavily armed group of extremists who weren't from Oregon, but they were extremists and they were opposing federal land policies and they were led by members of the Bundy family. They stormed the Malheur National Wildlife Refuge and then there was a standoff as people all over the country saw with federal, state, and local law enforcement. There was one death. Farther south in Nevada, the Bundys had not only stolen millions of dollars worth of grazing fees from the American people, they'd also basically pushed aside basic environmental standards laid out by the Taylor Grazing Act, leading to degraded landscapes. Now, Mount Huron County, just a few hours of wide open spaces east of that Mount Huron National Wildlife Refuge that the extremists took over. In Malheur County, not far from there, our ranchers, our small business people, to their great credit, they said, we're going to take a better path. In Malheur County, you don't have the Bundys breaking the law, 
Now here, counties, ranchers, and small business people are committed to being better and doing better. But that doesn't mean that they aren't skeptical of people coming in, changing the rules when it comes to the public lands surrounding their communities. So in 2018, the Oahe Basin Stewardship Council from Malheur County came to Washington to meet with me. And Mr. President and Senator Brass will be interested in this. So this group of you know, ranchers and small business people came to me with a very improbable request for a Democratic United States Senator. Would I be willing to work with them to pass land management legislation that could serve as an alternative to a designation as a national monument? And I thought this was the point my colleagues would be interested in. I asked one member of the group if they came to me because they thought I might take leave of my senses and say yes to their request. And when I asked them, the person who was looking at me said, yep, that's what we thought, Ron. Looming over the discussion was the history of this wonderful part of Eastern Oregon. Not going to take my colleagues through a long discussion of the history of the Taylor Grazing Act, goes all the way back to 32. So I'll just start with the fact that this area in Malheur County makes up most of the Vale District of the Bureau of Land Management, which of course is part of the Department of Interior. The Vale District was the poster child for, quote, scientific grazing management in the 60s and early 70s under the Taylor Grazing Act. Did it live up to its potential? I would say it didn't because its efforts really weren't adequately funded, and it lacked consistent monitoring or the adaptive management needed to make it work on the ground. And that raises the question of what results are really um, at issue. The Taylor Grazing Act is about turning cattle out onto public lands and attempting to assure that they don't destroy the land. But where is the act when it comes to fighting invasive weeds and actually improving soil health and responding climate change and the effects of rangeland fires? This bill, looking at what happened over the decades, the 30s, the 60s, the 70s, this bill says we're going to answer those questions for 2020. The Oahe Basin Stewardship Council from Malheur County wanted to work together I was pleased that they came with their improbable request. And I just said, you know, we've got, you know, one additional chance here on our watch to bring people together, to come up with a sensible proposal. And when they indicated they wanted to work with me, I basically said, how could I refuse? And knowing the violence that can erupt in the West. When people become closed off, when people just refuse to talk, that's when you have a prescription for trouble. As long as we're talking, as long as we're coming together, as long as we're sitting with each other and maybe just having a coffee and a tuna fish sandwich, you've got an opportunity to come up with solutions. And that's why I agreed to this. I agreed, in effect, Mr. President, to try to match the courage of these ranchers and business people in coming forward. And I said, if they're going to be willing to think through how to do this, I'm going to join them. Now, the other area I want to touch on is I said at the get-go, and I think this has uh, implications for dealing with public lands in the West, I said there have got to be two requirements to help us all protect the land and preserve the ranching way of life. 
First, we'd have to bring everybody to the table, environmentalists, ranchers, local uh, folks, and we'd have to bring some of the uh, folks from the more metropolitan area as well. And that's because, um, in effect, when I said that, um, they said, okay, you know, you know your way around, you know, le legislation. We'll be part of trying to find common ground. And there is common ground on the key question, Mr. President, is every nook and cranny of Oregon cares about our treasures in the Oahe Canyon lands. Now here County is far to the east in our state. It may keep its clock on Idaho time, but it is enormously loved all across our state. And in my view, that alone ought to be a reason. After decades and decades of differences with respect to how to manage these treasures, that alone is a reason to work together. The second um, rule was that our discussions were all about, we were gonna try to make sure that we were going to not get everybody frustrated at um, the get-go because we weren't going to litigate this with the press and with uh, outside groups every time somebody had a little um, uh, question, any kind of uh, dispute. So in effect, we had set it up so that other groups, environmental and ranchers, there was gonna be uh, a lot of opportunity for folks um, to have their stay, say and that there would be an understanding that we would respect our environmental laws. That was also very uh, pivotal. In March of 2019, we got our group together in a conference room at the National Guard uh, Armory in Ontario. And basically those were kind of the things that we wanted to start with that we thought gave us a chance to build this uh, coalition that could lead to passing legislation to manage these treasures. So we got ranchers, environmentalists, local businesses. We met essentially every other Monday for months and months. I also want to thank the Bureau of Land Management and uh, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Oregon State Parks, and uh, Fish and Wildlife Management Agencies, and local tribe representatives who put in enormous amounts of time offering information, expertise, and goodwill. I met with local county officials as well, relearning um, uh, their thoughts with respect to roads and water infrastructure and their most important local economic uh, needs. So that's what really led to this legislation. And finally, what we said is we've got to make sure that people have an opportunity to also talk sort of a little bit um, offline. And so after these sessions, we always found a way to make it to a coffee shop or somewhere where people could just have a soda or perhaps something a little bit uh, stronger. And we could just take the time informally to talk about uh, what we thought the future was for this incredible part of the world. Now, in closing up, I want to mention that I think land designation discussions pit people against one another in the West if you do it the traditional sort of way. We needed some unity if we were going to come together on a bill. So that's why we wanted to make sure everybody had a shared understanding of how uh, this would be addressed. And I particularly want at this time, Mr. President, to commend Sarah Biddleman, who is sitting here with me, who month after month after month, call after call after call, email after email after email, always tried 
to keep this on focus. And I also want to mention at this time our inspiration was the late Mary Gatreau, who was in our office for over two decades. She was the spirit of this effort. She lived in Portland, and yet she was beloved, beloved by the people of rural Oregon, the people of Malheur County. So with Sarah and Mary as the energy behind this, we really set out to build this coalition, which has gotten to this point. It was a coalition driven on the fact that people would take the time to do this right. When I brought it up to the attention of Senator Brassa, who obviously will play a key role in the uh, Energy and Natural Resources Committee, the first thing he wanted to hear about was the kind of groundwork that had been laid for local input, for local stakeholders. And I described to him much of what we have been uh, talking about. So I introduced the Malheur CEO Act in November of 2019. It was part of a legislative uh, hearing. And let me just very quickly uh, describe a couple elements of it. Um, it works this way. It includes rangeland management enhancements, loop roads to focus tourists and build the local economy, and about a million acres of wilderness designation. It also moves around a million acres of land now being studied into multiple use management. The bill implements a few key strategies, a plan to let ranchers do ranch range improvements, irrigation systems, removing water-sucking juniper and replacing invasive weeds with native grasses and improve the ecological health of the rangelands. So here are the pictures to my left. The first is a picture of rangeland being overrun by weeds. The second shows rangeland in a native, healthy condition. Now, the bill also creates a Malheur community empowerment for the Oahe Advisory Group. So on an ongoing basis, it can advise the BLM on land management, and it provides substantial funding for the BLM so it can finish environmental soil surveys and to carry out environmental uh, policies associated with this and monitor the uh, implementation of the bill. The bill includes funding to study the designation of three loop roads, designed to improve the visitor experience, keep visitors out of trouble, and drive more traffic to the small retail businesses, which I think we all understand desperately, desperately need our attention. And I also want to thank at this point, while I'm on the floor, Senator Grassley. He and I have led the bipartisan effort on the Finance Committee. I see Senator Manchin here. He knows how strongly we feel about getting the small businesses the deductibility associated with these PPP loans. And I bring this up only by way of saying that uh, we're grateful to Senator Grassley for working with me. He's the chair of the Finance Committee. I'm the ranking Democrat. But Senator Manchin and others deserve credit for helping us get that uh, proposal moving. And we've made it clear we've got to get that in before we go home. And part of it is our concern for those small retail businesses that we saw in the Oahe. Finally, the bill provides uh, for amenities, a marina at the Oahe Reservoir. That, too, is going to be good for the local economy. Uh, recreation is a big economic engine in our part of uh, the world. And the last point I'll just mention is the bill is a compromise. Everybody had to make some concessions. There are um, folks who feel that the environmental groups got too much uh, here. There are folks who feel the ranchers and the small business people got uh, too much. But the fact is, all sides said, we have some core values and some core priorities. Let's see if we can address the core values and core priorities on both sides of this so that this spectacular portion of Eastern Oregon could be protected and preserved 
and we can respect and empower the people who call it home and work so hard to make a living there. Uh, Mr. President, finally, I'm going to put into the record uh, the names of all the people who worked so hard on this effort, our Oahe Basin Stewardship uh, Coalition. They are, you know, ranchers. There are folks on uh, various kinds of environmental uh, organizations and uh, groups, and they deserve incredible credit for being willing to put in the time and effort on something that seemed so improbable. Finally, I want to thank my partner here in uh, the Senate, Senator uh, Merkley. He has been terrific as we worked on this. We both share a love of the land in eastern Oregon. As I say, we'll walk through all the people at BLM and Fish and Wildlife and Oregon State Parks who deserve um, credit. Now it's up to the United States Senate to get this passed. It isn't going to happen today, unfortunately, but I want the Senate to know I'm going to get at it. I'm going to stay at it until this um, gets done. I think it'll be of enormous benefit to rural Oregon. I think it'll be of enormous benefit to our state. And I think it will be a model for how our country brings people together, particularly as it relates to issues where we've been polarized in the past. Mr. President, with that, I yield down the floor.